Welcome everybody, uh, my name is uh, Fabio Bortolotti, I translate video games uh, for a living, which is pretty fun. And um, this is a lesson uh, about uh, the, the importance of uh, language in uh, localization and its um, political power and uh, our philosophical uh, duty to uh, adhere to uh, the vision of the creator, which is not, uh, uh, which is how, how can we do that uh, by not uh, oversimplifying the language and by learning to recognize uh, the important bits. And uh, we will go over um, kind of a case study on a game I translated. The game is called NeoCab, uh, where uh, this problem was uh, uh, very difficult to deal with because one of the important bits in the source language didn't have an exact uh, um, translation in Italian. And so we had to come up with um, creative solutions. I would like to stress that uh, while uh, the message of this lesson is that language is inherently political and uh, every choice we make with language is political, um, this won't be a lesson about politics, of course. Uh, you will be, you will easily understand maybe where I stand on politics, but that is not the point of this lesson. Uh, what I think it's interesting is that uh, um, this lesson is about uh, uh, the challenges you will face uh, in localization almost daily. And this is a very extreme case and therefore is very uh, suitable for um, explaining the problem and exploring uh, uh, how you can look actively for solutions and maybe turn problems into occasions. But uh, I won't tell you what, what to think about this very, uh, the issues we'll talk about today because they are very important, very delicate. Uh, the goal of this lesson is to uh, talk about language and its implications. So, uh, the story of this um, task starts with... Uh, I think I also have some material like this. Yes, I will just remove the starting now because it already started, sorry about this. And I can just pop up here. Okay, so um, I, I work for several uh, different clients in translation and uh, I, did, uh, I, I worked on this project with um, a very good team of translators called the G-Log team that I always, always thank because it's, a, it's really a pleasure to work with them. And uh, we were approached by the developers of uh, NeoCab which is the game you are uh, looking at now. And um, it's a really interesting game uh, set in a very close cyberpunk-ish future um, where the, um, the theme of uh, protest, uh, of activism, is, very, um, is a very central part of the plot. And uh, it's... Uh, it's a game about uh, protest, it's a game about uh, um, the gig economy, uh, it's a game about uh, capitalism, about uh, injustice, uh, about violence. Uh, um, it's a very, in itself, it's what I would define a very political game, because uh, um, besides the, the fun and the gameplay, uh, it is clear that a game uh, like this one has uh, a message. And uh, my goal when I try to um, translate a game it's, is to understand the message of a game and to adapt the language I will translate into to it. By the way, uh, I translate video games in Italian. 
So uh, I usually start from English and I translate video games in Italian. So uh, most of this lesson will be tailored around uh, the challenges of uh, Italian. Um, but bear in mind that uh, the challenges of Italian are very common throughout uh, all uh, the Romance languages. So uh, while some of the problems might seem uh, specific, they have uh, uh, different uh, um, versions uh, in mostly, in, in basically all of the Romance languages. So, uh, we will discuss Italian, but uh, um, the goal here is to explore uh, uh, the, crea the creative process we explore to do this uh, and therefore to uh, adapt um, that mindset to all the different languages. So, um, the developers approached us with the translation of NeoCab. And uh, we, mm, we started uh, looking at, uh, at all the material and it was a very, uh, it's a very narrative game, uh, uh, very uh, text intensive because uh, most of the gameplay is just uh, uh, choosing what to say and when to say. So uh, we started looking at the text. Mm, it's always a good, uh, whenever, whenever you have uh, uh, access to all the database of a game, it's always a really good idea to uh, to start looking at all of the game before starting to do any real work. But we could do that and uh, while we were um, exploring the database of the game, uh, the developers um, uh, gave us a few pointers uh, about uh, the game, about the message, and also, they, they had this um, quite uncommon uh, request because they told us that uh, uh, one of the characters of the game was uh, uh, non-binary, is non-binary. And uh, that the main character of the game had uh, respect for, uh, these, uh, for this and uh, spoke to them uh, using the appropriate uh, gender neutral pronouns where well, the non the, the appropriate non binary pronouns and that was a very uncommon request i let's let's do a step back and quickly uh, explain uh, um, the concept of uh, non-binary characters, uh, a non-binary character. A non-binary character, uh, a non-binary person actually, is uh, a person who identify, uh, identifies themselves uh, as outside of the gender binary. So uh, not strictly male, not strictly female. Um, it's a very... Um, hot topic, weirdly enough, if you've seen uh, the tweets from uh, JK Rowling and such, it's a very, it is a very hot topic and uh, this is why the request was so important because uh, if, you, if a developer decides to uh, put something um, to stress um, this detail in their game, uh, it must mean that it's an important detail for them and that it's an important part of the story. So we were faced with a very um, big problem because uh, usually one of the most common uh, solutions in, uh, in English is the use of them the many, many, many non-binary persons uh, choose to refer to themselves with the pronoun they, them. There are also other pronouns, but this is not what we're talking about now. Let's say that many non-binary persons uh, adopt they, them as their preferred pronoun. And um, that uh, 
them is very interesting because it started uh, um, even before being used by non-binary persons uh, um, it was and it is uh, a very interesting solution in English uh, for an undetermined uh, uh, plural, uh, an undetermined singular. So, um, if you don't know the gender of uh, one person in a sentence, instead of defaulting to say that it, to say him, so uh, assuming that this person is male, you can use them, uh, which is the gender neutral them, uh, gender neutral singular them which instead of a plural, it's a singular, but that can mean male or female. Uh, this is uh, something uh, that, uh, um, as a translator, even before uh, being aware of um, uh, non-binary people and um, trans uh, rights, uh, the pronoun, uh, the them, pronoun was very common to me as a translator because video games uh, often have uh, an undetermined gender like uh, think of all of the um, random uh, chat lines that you can have uh, in a in an open world game uh, very often uh, the non-playing character will address another non-playing character which might be male might be female so uh, lots of these uh, lines uh, um, use them as a pronoun and that is really a challenge in Italian and in many languages because sometimes it's hard to understand if, it's, if, it, if that them is actually a plural or if it's a singular and if it's a singular you also have to use uh, some tricks in your own language to avoid connotating a gender but this is not this is just a brief introduction on the problem the fact is that uh, in um, in neocab we had this character that uh, um, is non-binary and that refers to themselves as they them and our main character she uh, respects mm, this desire and uh, talks to them in an appropriate and respectful way using their preferred pronouns. So, let's go back to the request. The developer asked, uh, told us, okay, bear in mind that she is respectful and uh, uh, she will use uh, the correct pronouns. Please use the say, please use the gender neutral pronouns uh, in uh, Italian. And that was a really difficult moment because uh, um, we, we faced a seemingly impossible problem because Italian does not have any, um, any neutral form. And actually, it's worst. Uh, I, um, I think I wrote down an article after um, translating uh, the game and uh, I have a few examples uh, about why Italian is such a difficult language uh, even um, going beyond the very peculiar problem of a non-binary character so uh, when we say uh, sei fantastico uh, it's a singular and masculine so, sei fantastico, male, uh, masculine. Uh, sei fantastica, singular and feminine. Uh, so, one female. Um, siete fantastici, uh, plural and masculine. So, um, two, men, two men are fantastic. And siete fantastiche, it's plural and feminine. But what if... Uh, in Italian, we have um, a group of uh, one man and one female. We have uh, uh, we we say we default to the um, the plural masculine. So 
If that group was made by a man and a woman, we would say you are fantas siete fantastici, uh, completely avoiding the woman in the group and to saying that in case of mixed groups, the default is the um, masculine plural. And this is something that uh, has been part of the conversation uh, about representation in Italian uh, a lot. And not only today, this has been uh, a topic of discussion uh, since the, the 80s. Like, uh, I have another example here. Two male kids are due bambini. Two female kids are due bambine. But one male kid and one female kid is due bambini. So this is raises several problems in uh, representation. And this is to explain the stuff we have to work with because um, we are translating again from English to Italian and uh, we have to use Italian. We have to use Italian and, uh, and since we were in elementary school, the first thing uh, they taught us about plurals is that in case of mixed groups, you use you default to the masculine. Plural. And um, the extension of that rule is that usually, and I say usually because I really think this is uh, kind of wrong, but this is the accepted rule um, in language, in Italian, the Italian language right now, that uh, when you are in doubt um, exactly where um, an English person would use uh, them, when you're in doubt, you can just default to the, uh, the male singular, which is um, the usual solution. But in this context, uh, this solution was especially bad because, uh, um, to be honest, uh, I think it's bad on its own. But this is my idea and, and my politics, actually. But uh, what happened uh, is that the developers, so the writers of the game, asked us to, mm, to be respectful of that. And uh, so we had the Skype chat. And uh, I remember clearly that um, somebody told, said, uh, yeah, the usual solution is uh, to use uh, the male pronoun for this character. And, and we all agreed, but this is so sad because yes, we are mm, in front of a big and seemingly uh, impossible to overcome problem with language because they asked us to use a pronoun that it's not there in Italian. And, but it was so sad because uh, to translate it with um, using only a male uh, pronoun or even just uh, choosing uh, of using uh, only a female pronoun would have been um, a huge underrepresentation of the uh, will of the writers. And, and also by reading the, the script, we noticed it was a really important part of the story, like a, a relevant part of the story. So we said, okay, this is too sad. We have to think about this. And uh, we thought about the setting of the game, which is uh, um, a very a kind of close cyberpunk future. Uh, it's kind of a dystopian uh, world uh, in a not far away, but still in the future. So it's cyberpunk and it's in the future. And um, we started reading because uh, one of the things I highly recommend to do when you are faced with uh, problems uh, is to read 
go and read uh, um, books, uh, stories, everything that could be compatible with uh, the issue at hand. And um, by thinking of uh, cyberpunk fiction and by going to read some of that, we found out that uh, often in uh, cyberpunk, uh, in the cyberpunk narrative, you can uh, see some new words or some new concepts and uh, part of the charm in, uh, in a cyberpunk uh, story is that nobody explains that to you. It's just there for you to figure out. It's, uh, it's kind of strange, but that strangeness is uh, part of the charm of cyberpunk because if Gibson had to explain uh, uh, everything that went on in, in his books, a new romance would have been as long as The Lord of the Rings. So he just uh, uh, used a few things, a few concepts, a few words without needing to explain that. And that strangeness uh, that uh, uh, was originating in words was actually a really important part of cyberpunk literature. And um, so we thought about, we also thought about the future because we said, okay, uh, Italia, let's look at Italian today. And uh, today there is uh, no, um, we have some discussion in Italian about uh, some possible solutions to uh, the gender, the, the, the problem that Italian is a very gendered language. But we have no solutions so far. Uh, we can't even agree on a plural which isn't, uh, um, we cannot agree on a plural that uh, doesn't exclude uh, all of the feminine side. Uh, we don't, for sure, we don't have uh, a pronoun and a case for uh, non-binary characters. And so we, we said, okay, but our game uh, is set in the future. So uh, we can take these two elements. First, cyberpunk uh, doesn't have to explain everything. It does. Uh, and uh, some of the strangeness or, or of the unusualness of the concepts is part of the charm of the narrative. And it's set in the future, so we can imagine that uh, uh, in, uh, say, 30 years or 20 years, uh, uh, Italian will have uh, changed and uh, maybe it could have uh, developed uh, new solutions. And so we said, okay, how can we do this? We have to come up with a solution and we have to run with it. We have to try to implement it in the game. So this is phase, um, the phase one of the problem was realizing it was not acceptable to use uh, the Italian language how it's usually used. We, we decided that we had to uh, break some rules or rather, instead of breaking a few rules, we had to uh, make up new rules. Uh, and that was really fun. So uh, we studied, we started studying and uh, we, mm, we looked at several different solutions that have been uh, proposed um, throughout the progressive scene. So um, here, in the, here you can see the, the asterisk. Uh, this uh, graffiti says uh, uh, beauty is uh, of everybody. Um, and I think it's really interesting because when I say it in, in English, beauty is of everybody. You don't feel any gender in this sentence. And, but if I tell you that la bellezza è di tutti, uh, it sounds like beauty belongs to men. And if I say la bellezza è di tutte, it sounds like beauty belongs to women. And 
this is uh, uh, one of the... Um, this is not a solution, this is the asterisk. Uh, you can see it uh, quite often uh, in progressive uh, circles, not only in graffiti. I use this graffiti because I, think it, I thought it was cool, but uh, you can also see it on, uh, on internet posts, uh, you can see it on, um, on flyers, on posters, on all sorts of communication. And uh, many people in Italy are outraged by uh, this because they say this is not pronounceable and we already have a very working uh, language. Why should we destroy our language by um, using unpronounceable asterisks? And actually, these are all uh, very valid points because uh, mm, the asterisk isn't a solution, it's not pronounceable, therefore it's uh, very hard to imagine uh, uh, for it to be used uh, in real life, uh, in spoken communication. But I always like to say that uh, I love the asterisk because it's a way of raising a problem. Um, People seeing asterisks, even if they don't agree uh, with the use of asterisks, are forced to reason on why the asterisk has been, is being used. And so I, I always say that uh, asterisks are a very good way to, to kickstart the conversation and to raise awareness about uh, uh, a very real problem of um, modern, uh, of contemporary Italian. And I say this not only for uh, political reasons, but also because as a translator, I would love to uh, be able to work uh, with a less gendered version of Italian, because it would make my life so much easier. But mm, we had to, to think that in the future of uh, Neocab, uh, we, mm, Italian would have found a solution and this solution um, has to be uh, somehow pronounceable. And so we explored um, several solutions. Uh, I think um, some people use the, the asterisks, uh, some people uh, used um, okay these are these are some of the usual solutions let's see okay uh, some use asterisks some use uh, an x and um, some use a u uh, which uh, sounds uh, a little funny siamo tutto bellissimo but actually has some merit in terms of uh, philology but this is not what we are talking about. And, but still it's a very strong choice to use a U. And uh, we wanted to find uh, something more, uh, at the same time, something more uh, catchy, more cyberpunk, and uh, that really um, worked for us, in a sense. And uh, disclaimer, uh, I, we worked on this uh, on, on our own and uh, we found that we, we decided that a very interesting way would have been to use the schwa. And uh, even though we came to this solution on our own, I want to stress that uh, uh, this solution had been proposed and has been used uh, by several um, activists. So uh, we, didn't we didn't come up with anything new, but we decided to um, reason on a way to fully implement this. And why the schwa? The schwa is, um, first of all, it's pronounceable. Uh, even though we Italians don't pronounce it very often, uh, 
uh, it's the sound you make when you say the uh, the article the in English and um, it's the mid central vowel so um, it's uh, the most neutral uh, uh, vowel sound uh, you can produce and I think it's um, it's kind of romantic and poetic that uh, the vowel the sound we proposed for the neutral uh, and the non-binary form uh, are um, is the mid central vowel and uh, after looking in, and also I really like the solution because uh, in Italian we have we usually have the the letter a for the feminine uh, names and the letter o for the male names there are several exceptions to this because this is Italian of course it's a nightmare of the language uh, full of uh, exceptions but you get my point a female o male usually and uh, we really liked the, um, the schwa solution because it's a reverse uh, E that can both look uh, as uh, a lowercase a or uh, in some kind of uh, o, um, like an unfinished o. And I think it really, it was cool to see it was um, it worked uh, on an, it worked on the surface for uh, because it, it looked both like an O and an A and uh, most interestingly uh, this is actually a vowel that's used in uh, several Italian dialects even though you don't see it used in um, in the, in the Italian we learn in school, we have dozens of dialects in Italy. And many of them, uh, many of them have some use for the schwa in some way. And uh, while we were researching this, we found something really interesting. Um, Napoletano, Neapolitan is uh, beautiful dialect uh, that is also a very much spoken dialect we have some uh, uh, we have some dial we have some basically dying dialects uh, I live in Milano and uh, the last time I heard uh, speaking Milanese uh, was from my grandfather and we don't speak to each other in Milanese day to day but um, in Naples uh, and in the south, uh, uh, some of these dialects are very used. And uh, um, Neapolitan has uh, a lot of use for, um, for the schwa. And uh, this is going to be really terrible disclaimer. Um, I am really bad at imitating dialects so this won't be representative of Neapolitan but I want to um, to make an example of a word which is Waglione and uh, the way you would say uh, which basically means um, guy or girl because Waglione uh, I'm so bad at saying this sorry to all the people from uh, Napoli that are uh, tuned into this but uh, the way you write guaglione is actually uh, if you if you would have to write it with the phonet with the phonetic alphabet you would use the schwa and uh, for the way it's pronounced in Neapolitan even though it's in Italy it does not connotate any gender so it's uh, saying guaglio is actually a gender neutral way of addressing people which is very fascinating and while uh, uh, researching this uh, I uh, I found out I found out that uh, uh, there are several uh, uh, non-binary persons uh, that uh, are using 
these aspects of dialect uh, in order to be represented in their language and to, uh, to speak a language that uh, is uh, attuned to, their, um, to what they feel. And uh, so he said, okay, this can actually work. And uh, of course, some, somebody will, be, will say that we are uh, destroying Italian, but we really didn't care because uh, uh, the vision of the developer was to preserve the respect the main character had for a non-binary character. So, uh, but it was very... Um, there are several problems in the implementation of, of a solution like this. Um, which is, firstly, that uh, um, the schwa you're seeing here is not usually featured in all of the character sets. And um, just like uh, the, the accented is uh, and umlauts uh, and stuff like that. So um, we had to ask the developer to implement the schwa in the game. But also we had to find a way to explain the problem to the developer. Because as much as, the, as we told them, uh, yeah, okay, we understand the problem and we'll try to think about a solution, uh, sometimes it's really hard to explain the, the hurdles of uh, a very gendered language, like Italian, Spanish, French and many European languages, uh, to American developers that uh, are used to speak English, that has way less problems like that and way more solutions. And so we had to, um, to explain. And we chose to write a very simple uh, uh, and short paper about the problem. Uh, so we explained, uh, as you see, as you can see here, we explained the problems of Italian. Uh, we explained uh, why um, gender language is uh, problematic in Italy right now, why it's a very, uh, why it's a matter of discussion since the 80s, uh, what are the solutions that are being used in uh, progressive circles. And we tried to um, explain all of the nuances of a gender language. So basically we uh, made sure to explain very clearly what the problem was. And uh, we explained why uh, we proposed uh, such a solution, like the schwa. And uh, we even uh, went as far as to uh, try and uh, think about uh, uh, a neutral case with uh, articles, uh, um, adjectives, uh, nouns, uh, and even a pronoun. Um, we didn't end up using uh, most of these uh, in the game, but we, it was really uh, useful for us, working as a team on the game, to have uh, a written rule set. Uh, to have a grammatic to, to work with. And we, we sent this to the we sent this to developers and we told them, okay, this is a solution. Uh, this is the solution we thought about. And uh, be aware that uh, uh, this will be um, this is a very uh, hot, uh, topic in um, this is a very hot topic in uh, in Italian language and this kind of decision will be perceived as political by many uh, so we basically uh, approached the the, um, the developer uh, with two things one a solution and then a, a cultural explanation of what the uh, what that solution implied in in the Italian market. 
So we basically gave them a solution and a way to, uh, to, decide for, uh, to decide for themselves if they wanted to enact their vision in Italian as well. And they were very happy. Uh, the developers were very happy that we took the, um, the issue at heart and very quickly implemented uh, a solution, thanks to the Radox, by the way. <laughs> and uh, uh, they very quickly implemented the schwa and uh, uh, they worked very closely with us to, um, they provided builds that uh, they provide localized builds with our localized text uh, in it. And uh, so we tried playing the game and seeing what, uh, how it actually worked. If it worked, if it was too strange, if it was too weird, if it, was, uh, uh, if it made the game uh, not understandable. And, uh, and it was, uh, it really worked. We were very uh, happy with the result because the, um, the choice we made really worked and uh, it made uh, complete sense to us and really worked in a um, cyberpunk kind of way. Uh, so um, we were very, very, very happy because uh, we took a very difficult challenge. We were fronted with a seemingly impossible challenge in localization. Uh, and if we just did the default thing, we would have translated a game that would have been, would have resulted in a much poorer result than the original. And uh, uh, worthily, in uh, a translated game that didn't really reflect the vision of the writers in a game that was all about the vision of the writers. And uh, what's really special to me is that uh, we took what was a challenge and by working with the developers, we found a way to uh, turn it into a create, into a, an occasion to be creative and to actually do an act of world building in this cyberpunk uh, uh, world and environment. So um, we did that. We tested the game, uh, the game worked. We asked uh, for permission to the developers uh, to privately show the game to, um, to other people. And uh, also we decided to, uh, since this was a very, since this is a very delicate uh, matter and uh, this is not even my battle because uh, uh, this problem never um, had an impact on my life. So we wanted to reach out uh, to anybody that could be uh, interested in it. So we reached out to uh, some friends in the, in the LGBTQ community and uh, before actually going forward with it all, we asked, okay, we thought of this solution. Is this okay to you? Um, do you like it? Uh, are we missing uh, uh, something crucial, something important, and they were all pretty enthusiastic, and so the game came out, and the game came out, we, nobody got really angry about our uh, uh, bending and creating new rules of uh, Italian, everybody was happy, the developer was happy, and actually the game was... Uh, I would say, um, very well received in, in this choice. And uh, this makes it so important to me because uh, I really think that games uh, uh, are political 
well, at least games can be a very political medium. And uh, as a translator, if you're lucky, you'll find yourself uh, uh, dealing with uh, games that are political and that present you with uh, challenges like this one. And why are they so political? Because uh, if there's a thing that can enact change in language and uh, language has a huge influence uh, on the world because uh, the way we speak um, has a direct influence on the way we think and we see things. So the most powerful thing uh, a game can do is to uh, use the language in the way it in the way you want it to be used. I always uh, have the, I, I always remember uh, an interview with um, Tolkien from the Lord of the Rings, and uh, as you know, Tolkien uh, invented these all languages for uh, the Silmarillion and the Lord of the Rings, and uh, wrote uh, poetry in it for uh, for its epics, and. Uh, there was an interview uh, with Tolkien uh, about Esperanto that back in the 80s uh, had this huge um, hope of becoming uh, uh, a universal language. And uh, somebody asked the Tolkien, uh, okay, why do you think that Elvish is more spoken than Esperanto? Because Elvish is fake and uh, Esperanto aims to be real and the answer from Tolkien was really illuminating to me because he said this is because uh, Elvish has some literature and Esperanto does not because when you have uh, uh, poems, you have songs, uh, you have uh, uh, texts in, in Elvish that are really well loved by people and this made me really think and uh, so I really think that uh, uh, games can be a very subversive medium because you can make them uh, speak and talk uh, in a very specific way and that use can actually enact change or at least uh, can be a small brick in any change. Of course you have to uh, to do this uh, in another way. I mean, mm, you cannot do this on your own because you have to, uh, to adhere to the vision of the developer, of the, of the writer. You absolutely cannot do this on your own. And uh, as you can imagine, choices like this can be uh, quite uh, heavy and shaking. And so, uh, what you have to do is to discuss closely all of the nuances of the problem with the developers. Of course, in turn, the developers have the, the duty of telling the translators what's important to them and uh, what are the really crucial parts uh, of language and story that might risk to be lost in translation. And I think that's basically it for my lesson today. And so, to recap, we were fronted with a seemingly impossible problem uh, because we were asked to use uh, um, non-binary pronouns in Italian and Italian does not have non-binary pronouns and also um, is a very gendered language, so uh, it was quite the opposite. So we looked at the game, uh, we studied the setting of the game and we started imagining and thinking about potential solutions. Um, we read cyberpunk literature, we watched movies, we thought about it a lot and we came up with a possible solution. Um, well, we came up with the idea 
of trying to break the rules and creating something since cyberpunk allowed us to explore uh, even the idea that Italian our language might have evolved throughout the 20 years that separate the present from the setting of the game and after that we started uh, studying um, all of the history of the problem because it, it still is a very uh, contemporary problem so we studied uh, all the literature on that and we came up with our own solution we mm, wrote a short paper uh, to explain our solution and the nuances of the problem to the developer uh, the developer approved the developer implemented mm, the character we need to enact the solution and then we uh, tested everything to see that everything worked, that everything was understandable, that the gameplay was intact, and all of this. Uh, it worked, the game came out, and um, we won. Well, we were very happy, the developers were happy, and um, we took uh, uh, the occasion of turning uh, yeah, a potential problem into uh, a world-building occasion. And that's it for my lesson. And um, Leonardo, if you have some uh, uh, questions from your students, I'm here to understand, to, to, um, to answer. I will just uh, uh, say very quickly something in Italian. Uh, grazie per il ride a chi è arrivato. Questo è un canale che normalmente si occupa di retro gaming come potete vedere qui eh, siete capitati sul canale in un momento molto eh, particolare perché ehm, quella che avete appena sentito è stato un intervento per eh, il corso che potete leggere nel, um, nel titolo video game localization and philosophy of language eh, e quindi appunto avete visto una piccola lezione universitaria ehm, se tornerete su questo canale troverete contenuti molto diversi, tipo anche solo stasera alle nove e mezza. Però adesso finiamo la lezione. Uh, so, uh, Eliconian, which is uh, Leo, ciao Leo. Um, do you think that these themes can be discussed and implemented in mainstream video games as well? Or the distance between developers and localizers is too far to be interesting? Is Siete Fantastici also used for a big group of women if, it's only, if there is only one man included? Yes. If you have nine women and one man, you use Siete Fantastici. You technically have to use the male plural. Uh, of course, uh, somebody doesn't do that. But if you look at the standard grammar in Italian, uh, 99 women and one man is Siete Fantastici not fantastic. Um, I will get to all, all the questions. Uh, can we get the link to your article? Of course, I will just... Uh, uh, this is the article, okay. And uh, I will send uh, Leonardo, Leonardo the, um, the very short paper, which is this one. It's very short and it, uh, calling it a paper is very generous. It was just some thing we assembled assembled quickly to to be understood by the developers and um, I will answer the first question later because it's it's a biggie uh, you mentioned the implementation of the schwa from a technical point of view can you please give more details of what happened well it's very simple um, First of all, let me say that I'm not an expert in character encoding and that uh, there are several standards that might be used in games. But um, the character set that you use, like the, the UTF encoding or stuff like that, uh, it doesn't always have all the characters. Uh, this is a problem even without the schwa, because sometimes just the use of an accented uh, E, uh, which are very required in Italian, uh, needs the developer to add 
a tiny bit of code to uh, account for the, the that extra possible characters. So it, it was actually very simple. They had to go in the code and uh, uh, make it so that we could use uh, the schwa character in the game uh, and for it to be actually displayed as a schwa and not like, uh, you know, like the square that uh, appears when you don't have Japanese uh, characters installed on your computer. Um, so do you think that these themes can be discussed and implemented in mainstream video games as well? Or the distance between developers and localization is too far to be interesting? Okay, I have, um, I have two answers for this. And uh, because I think uh, what the problem we take on, we take on here um, was very specific and was the problem of um, the problem, the existence of a non-binary character. Um, to me, as a translator, that is a very, that is all part uh, of uh, one big problem of Italian, which is to be a very gendered language. And uh, to be clear, even, um, even if I didn't care about politics at all, having a less gendered language would be very helpful for my job. It would make my daily job easier. So um, even though I strongly believe in representation and in equal rights, I think that it would be, it's actually a limit of Italian. And whenever I translate video games, uh, like even silly details, like menus, um, I try to uh, adopt a gender neutral language. Like, um, and this is not doing politics on behalf of the developers, but uh, for example, the, um, this is a very common sentence in gaming. Uh, do you really, um, do you, are you sure you want to quit? This is a non-gendered sentence in English. Are you sure you want to quit the game? And uh, if you translate this literally in Italian, you have uh, Sei sicuro di voler uscire dal gioco? And that sicuro, you can hear the O, is gendered. And I really dislike that. Because um, first of all, it's not representative of the original sentence because it makes it more specific and second of all I think I wouldn't like to be in, uh, called with a different gender than my own by a game. So whenever I can, instead of uh, um, translating literally uh, to the word, I translate literally to the meaning and uh, instead of saying, sei sicuro di voler uscire, for the same sentence I can use uh, vuoi davvero uscire, which, is, uh, which translates to, uh, do you really want to quit? And that has the same 100% meaning, but is not gender. So this is uh, an, an issue that you can, uh, and I think you should as a translator, take all on your own. But if we want to speak about uh, the wider problem, uh, something like the thing that happened in Neocab, you absolutely 100% have to work uh, with the developer. And uh, you're very right in uh, saying that there is a... In AAA games, there is a big distance between the actual writers uh, and the developers and, uh, and the translator uh, because there, there are maybe uh, several different writers uh, and it all, it all goes through maybe a localization manager and there are several steps. Uh, as a translator, you can uh, ask questions uh, and sometimes you get answers. Uh, but if we want to uh, 
if you if we want to see something like this in a triple a game it's possible but uh, not in the familiar way we did it with a game like uh, neo cab uh, but um, okay this is the non-binary character by the way and not like we did it uh, in neo cab but this has to be a, a willful choice uh, a willful writing an artistic choice by the triple a developer uh, because if the triple a developer decides that uh, um, something like this is important to their game uh, to their vision or um, or to their cautions um, they have all the means to make that happen um, they can approach the localizing teams and tell okay uh, please use um, gender neutral language for this character or uh, please uh, um, try to uh, make it so that menus uh, are not gendered in your language uh, they have all the means to do so and but it has to be a, a willful choice by the developers and this is all about uh, uh, change and ultimately politics and this is why all games are politics to me and um, okay another one any um, do you think that you have a political responsibility to translate or localize games in a, in a way that may not confirm ah okay well do you think that you have a political responsibility to translate or localize games in a way that may not confirm to the expectations of the developers. Uh, I'm not sure I understand uh, the question. I think that uh, I have uh, a duty to try and represent uh, uh, at best uh, the vision of, uh, mm, of the developer and uh, mm, that I have to do at, in absence of instructions that I have to use my language which is Italian at the best of my possibility and uh, mm, to be clear the example I made uh, earlier like sei sicuro di voler uscire or vuoi davvero uscire I think why the Verushire, which is the ungendered ver version, is uh, the best version. So I must to translate in a good Italian, and I think this is the best Italian. Um, this is uh, actually my political choice, um, but it's, how to be clear, it's not me choosing that that is political, but anything is political in language. So even choosing the other one would be a political choice. So this is just my choice as a translator to, uh, to choose the, the best uh, possible variable that I can. And also that is not adding anything alien. I think you, have, you really have a duty to not add anything alien to the vision of the developer without discussing at least. And uh, since uh, uh, and making a, a, a not gendered use of Italian where it's possible in menus that are addressed to both men and women, um, I think it's uh, just uh, doing a good job. And if I had, um, if a client asked me to translate uh, things in a way that I find uh, not moral or that is not in line with my uh, way of thinking or well uh, if if I were if I were asked to um, to translate in a, in a way that I think it's really morally wrong I would discuss that with the client and uh, since I'm very lucky, I'm a lucky freelancer, I usually have a lot of work, I would have the, lux the luxury of saying, uh, 
no, I won't translate this because uh, you have all the right to make the game like you want, but I won't be the one to translate it if you want it to be. I know I I don't know if you want me to uh, misgender somebody uh, intentionally or in a bad way. And uh, ciao, Kalit. Um, um, ah, gatto sul tubo, ciao! <laughs> this is a very uh, uncommon stream, uh, caro gatto. Um, t -t -t question for you. Uh, do you think video games will have the power, as part of pop culture in general, um, to modify languages and introduce uh, neologism outside of the, of the specific game? Yes! Yes, yes, 100 times yes. I think this already happened. Um, in, uh, you can see that many of the neologisms in, uh, in video games have permeated uh, pop culture and ultimately entered pop culture, like uh, saying owned, pwned, uh, lit, uh, um, or many other things, even, and I'm saying this in English, but there are so there are very words uh, from video games that have entered the Italian equipare, uh, fragare, um, neologism. I, I think uh, that use is a very powerful forge of uh, neologisms, and uh, and this is exactly why I think that. Uh, uh, using language in a conscious way and uh, sometimes in an innovative way can be a very subversive uh, uh, use of the me of the medium of video games. Um, do you know a normal lost phone? Uh, um, yes, I never played that, but I met um, the developer at the GDC a few years ago and they were very, very nice. And so, are there any other um, question? Uh, I, will <laughs> I will do another quick explainer in Italian. Se vi siete appena connessi, non sono impazzito. Uh, questo è semplicemente uno stream um, un po' poco comune. Questo è normalmente un canale di retro gaming, ma oggi stiamo ehm, facendo una lezione per il corso di localizzazione di videogiochi e filosofia del linguaggio all'Università di Klagenfurt e abbiamo parlato del case study della traduzione di Neocab, che è un gioco che ho tradotto anche io. E, quindi appunto, se il canale non è diventato all'improvviso un canale in inglese, per intenderci, è sempre un canale di retro gaming, sempre in italiano, Ma ogni tanto possiamo farle queste cose. Um, are there any other questions? I think there are not. And, uh, Mr. Mandolino, what's your opinion on gaming lingo and its possible adoption by official localization? Oh, this is a tricky question. This is kind of off-topic for this lesson, um, but I'll gladly understand answer. Um, I always prefer to use the proper Italian word if I can, and it's tempting to use fragare, for example. But um, if you're too quick to do that. Uh, you end up just speaking in a very weird way and you might make the game less accessible to less dedicated gamers. So while I, uh, I really like to, um, to use some of the more uh, um, uh, slang gaming lingo uh, on outside of the games, so let's say I'm translating um, a press release, I'm translating a Reddit, a Reddit post, uh, that, that is where you can really use the lingo. In actual games it's always a difficult question and uh, you have to decide on a case-by-case -case basis, but I tend to prefer um, the classic Italian. 
variant there. Um, I would see, and I think Schwa is a very elegant solution to the problem. Excellent work, Anobic. Thank you so much. Uh, so, Eliconian um, students no longer have questions. So, if that's okay with you all, I will uh, close this stream and I will um, meet back on Skype with uh, the students and to say hello, to say bye. And so, let me just uh, thank you all for. Um, putting up with this very different uh, stream uh, for bearing with me. Uh, grazie a tutti per essere stati qua. Uh, mi spiace se vi siete spaventati perché um, all'improvviso è un canale tutto diverso, ma siamo ancora un canale di retro gaming. Questa sera alle 21.30 Bellotta uh, giocherà a una selezione di giochi bruttissimi, giochi di melma, non fatemi dire le parolacce all'università, giochi di melma alle 21.30. E ehm, io sono Kenobit, da Milano è tutto, e eh, vi saluto. Ciao a tutti mm, e ci vediamo questa sera alle 21.30. Bye bye!